Oh, Balboa v. Thunderlips. Yeah. The classic, yeah. the classic charity exhibition. Yeah. Man. Really, really, it really made you realize prize. that Rocky was just, it's just, you know, you're like, wow, we got another great Rocky movie. And then I love it because like you're watching it in the first half hour of Rocky, Rocky three, you're like, and Rocky's kind of a tool now, but that was the whole point is that, yes, <laughs> yes. you, you eventually, even no matter how humble your beginnings are, if you mm-hmm. become famous, you will become a tool, even Rocky. That's just the way it works. Yeah. And that was the era too. So I remember obviously being big into Hogan and wrestling. And then like, I think my folks or whatever would tell me things like, oh, you know, like Mike Tyson could beat up Hulk Hogan. Like you'd knock him out and say, no, he can't. Yeah. Hulk Hogan's a, a real American hero. Right. What are you talking he about? He has vitamins. He says right, his prayers. You know? Have you seen him rip shirts? No yeah. shirt stands a chance against him. Not a single one. I mean, at that time, I, I didn't realize he didn't really know any real wrestling moves. But the man could get a severe eye rake on you. He wouldn't mm-hmm. be able to see for a good three to four seconds. It's amazing that the best wrestlers were literally the least capable. Like him and Ultimate Warrior were like kids' favorites. And both of them were like two of the like renowned difficult people to work with and not good at wrestling. Uh, damn it, they look cool. Oh, hell yeah. Those big old glistening bodies of baby oil and tanned. <laughs> just mm-hmm. just uh, real sexy. Real sexy to a six-year-old boy, I got to tell you. Like, it, it was like mid-90s baseball, baby. Just give me all of the steroids. I want all of my heroes to be roided up. And I think, and then I... Uh, I can't remember what I might have been bummed out for a bit. Like, I can't believe he's on steroids. Don't say that. <laughs> like, why did it matter? It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> I don't care. Well, certainly in wrestling. Mm-hmm. All right. But even in baseball. Okay. Like, I'm not playing against him. What do I give a shit if, if he's jacked up on roids? Yeah. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I kind of look at my other favorites that aren't on roids and go, what are you doing? Are you even trying? True. Yeah. Like, How about, uh, did you see that baseball fight last night? Yeah, dude. Tim Anderson talk, got, a, a real fight. Tim, Tim Anderson got slugged, but it's not even the punch. It was literally, they squared up. Like yeah. the ump like got out of the way like and fight? both yeah. of them were like, hey, yeah. and I'm like, yeah, that's what it was. I'm like, I'm like, wow, it's a hockey fight. Yeah. Now that's what I call a grand slam. <sighs> Awful. All right. Started off with a riveting sports minute there. Hot sports talk. Hot Um, takes. Those always work for podcasts that are released weekly. I know. This is uh, the Sunday, a week and a half before this is released. So everybody's going to remember the one baseball fight that ever happened. I mean... Kind of, yeah. Kind of. Some like, not oh, a still lot of baseball? fights. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good for us. Good for mm-hmm. America. Yeah. America's pastime is past its time. Sunday night. I worked today, but you didn't, right? Take me through your not. Sunday. Anything notable? Did not you accomplish really. anything? Um, <laughs> no. Yeah, I did. Two things. So, uh, really, accomplishing two things on a Sunday for me—that's pretty good. Um, I did mow the lawn. Much needed. Um, it was very hot out. Um, but had to get that done. So I did get that done. It takes me about an hour. If I don't do a good or if I do a good job, but don't do the weed eating. Um, weeding would be normally about another 20, 25 minutes. Um, lots of edges, lots of edges. But I got the boat lawn mode, so that was good. And then um, I installed a dimmer switch in my basement room. Um, so that was interesting cause it's a three way trying to make switches. it sexier down there. I am. I am. Uh, mm-hmm. no, we recently painted, 
um, half of like, our, so the basement is half finished, but there's kind of like a somewhat of a di- divider. And I have in one half of it, I have a couple tables and chairs set up. And then in the other half, I have a um, recliner, uh, a TV and a couch. And in that area, well, we decided to paint the ceiling, the drop ceiling. We painted it pure black to kind of make it a little bit more movie theater And then we also painted the um, the walls gray, like a dark gray. So that area that of the finished part is is darker. So it's looks good for for viewing um, things such as movies, video games, or in the case of last night, WWE SummerSlam. Dude, nice. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure Chris Hansen has you on a, on, on the short list. <laughs> Sounds very dungeony. Rude, rude. It <laughs> sets the fucking mood, and by mood, I mean. <laughs> dimmed lighting for movies god damn yeah, this like is a not dark getting room, any better low so lights gonna, and yeah. glistening strong men on the television hey you would have had me down there at eight years old that's for sure but oh, instead okay. i had to go to go to a bar in auburn to watch the 1992 royal rumble <laughs> as a ten, nine-year-old boy <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was the only other okay. choice pay-per-views huh. were tough back in the day it was hard to get them they were they were yeah. you you kind of just had to be okay with finding out what happened um, yeah. the next week on like WWE superstars. If, if raw wasn't out. Um, so raw started in like 1993. So before that, before 93, 94, it was like, mm, you just found out when you found out, well, I guess. We'll rent the VHS in a few months. Right. And <laughs> check it out or the magazine or get, I mean, we're just going to like flip through magazines. I mean, there's still magazines. We have them at Wegmans. So right now is all the fantasy football stuff. Obviously, fashion magazines still sell. If you go to the airport, you'll find your uh, a lot of travel. A lot. Of, they're all very neat, and that's the way it has to be right now, right? Like super niche magazines. Um, right. But I don't really pick them up anymore. I used to love flipping through, but now it's just. I mean, I, I guess I know why because you can I, just flip through the phone. But there's something about a magazine and, that I still like the feel. And I guess I smell. guess Sports Illustrated now is monthly. Like they they don't do like weekly weekly releases anymore because it's Jeez. just it doesn't make sense to do so i think it's just like a monthly uh magazine that they send out and obviously si.com but yeah it's pretty wild because i mean we also were at that peak time for us because with the attitude era and stone cold and the rock era of wrestling we also were ushered in the magazine version of that with maxim fhm and I mean, those were solid Give reads. Me a hell yeah. Oh yeah. Exactly. Dude. Yeah. Get your sex delivered in the mailbox. You betcha. <laughs> yeah. Who who is the actress or musician that is on the cover of Maxim or FHM or Stuff? Those were the three. Maxim Primetime FHM. Primetime Mila FHM Kunis years. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. hmm Christina Aguilera. And it was like, Boy. yo, give Give me some Axe body spray, like some video game reviews, movie reviews, music. Like it was just literally a magazine yeah. for like high school and college kids. Yeah. The broiest dudes you could find. Yeah. You betcha. You betcha. Yeah. It's like, is this a scent of Axe body spray or a flavor of Mountain Dew? Like that was mm-hmm. uh, I feel like it's a real game. I think I've heard. I don't even know. Is that a real game? It seems like it could what? be. <laughs> Axe Body Spray or Mountain Dew. The game? I don't know if that's a meme. I don't know if it could, it could be a meme or something. I feel like I remember that. Or it just is a connection that <laughs> just is pretty clear in the mind. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, right. It's, yeah, it's, I think it's just, it, uh, it just makes sense. Yeah. Voodoo. Is it <laughs> Axe Body Spray? What? Baja Blast. Mm. You could rub it on I your like pulse points. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what was the last magazine that you think you subscribe to, or do you currently subscribe to a magazine? I do not subscribe to any magazines. Um, I had a friend who bought me a subscription to Esquire for a year, and that was probably the last magazine I had. Yeah, and that was about four years ago. Did you I did think. you use it? I mean, I I, I read it. I read it. Some stuff was really? a little like a little like um, it's not that the information's 
not accurate or anything. It's just stuff that I didn't necessarily care about. Like, I don't know. Some of it, like they'd, they'd have like business articles and stuff like that in there and uh, kind of self-help articles. Um, but there's a lot of stuff that I didn't care for. But that's the tough part with magazines is that, I mean, <clears throat> there are magazines are always going to have stuff you don't care about. And it's really hard, though. I don't even know how magazines do still exist. It's It's actually incredible that print still exists like physical newspapers and stuff. Yeah. I mean, I think I remember probably late two thousands. Like I would get like the economist and then I'd have like whatever ESPN, the magazine. Cause I'd always get something like get a year for $12. And I'm like, gotta have it. And functionally magazines were just like little, little tricks that you'd put on your coffee table. So when people came over, you're like, Oh, you read the economist. I'm like, Oh, weekly. Just love international news. I'm very I'm on the pulse. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, God, I know. Syria, tell me about it. Here, I, you uh -huh. want to borrow it? We don't have to talk about it. You can just borrow this. Yeah, if you want it. <laughs> we don't have to talk about it. We don't have to talk yeah. about it. There's not enough time. Yeah. Uh, just so cool. I mean, I, I honestly thought I had that in my mind. I was like, yeah, I'm going to put out these really pretentious magazines. Um, yeah, what is that? An old. Washington Post. Mm, I guess I didn't finish reading. You know, I'll read the news. Yeah, and I the, the writing's so good. I'll, I'll probably reread it. Yeah, <laughs> I think I probably had because that was when I worked in international education, and especially in D.C. It was such a vibe of like you had to always be connected and wanting to go to like these um, different research institutes to go to these sessions and talks, and like everybody there was working in some kind of either either government agency or some kind of nonprofit or you know something that there was a lot of money involved and you, you had to know people and network and it was all a pose i mean it was hilarious kind of a lot of the times because it's when blackberries were hot that's when i was in dc oh. so you'd get on the metro everybody be like dressed up and everybody be rolling rolling on their blackberry yep, on their little like, those little yes. roller ball i just can't leave work can't leave work at the office you know just always got to be connected um Ew, and it was disgusting yeah. You know, what's crazy is it's like it was a bunch of 20 somethings, too, that all thought they were like 45 years old. <laughs> they behaved like it. Like they all thought like they were either one making a difference or two really important um, and vital to the existence of humanity and the country existing. And everybody thought it, it was just so self-important. <laughs> this is wild. But that's the way the culture was there. But um, but having that metro sure was fun, I got to say, because like. It was probably the best happy hour scene I've ever seen in my life, which I kind of miss that? when I moved to Austin because in D.C., everybody's an orphan there. Nobody like grows up in D.C. proper and just stays there and works. I mean, some people do, obviously, but rarely. So you're just meeting all these people from all over. And at five o'clock, man, everybody hits the bars in D.C. because nobody has to drive home. Most people aren't married, don't have families yet because they all care about work. And so you would just go, I mean, almost nightly, go get drinks, play pool. Um, the building next door to me is this place called, it's like a three, three decker thing. It's called, uh, whatever. I don't remember what it's called, but just say like third base or something like that. Um, the first two bars and the, the bottom bar was called Archibald. So, you know, you go there, you get free pool at lunch and we always get drinks at lunch. But then Friday nights when he went there, Archibald's in the basement after nine, just turned into a casual strip club. So you'd be there. There was a casual like strip club. club I know. Mean. We didn't know. We were just down there one night. And then at nine o'clock, it was like, never realized there was all these like poles around. And then just people came out and just started dancing. <laughs> so I was like, oh shit, what's going on here? Um, but it was were, a vibe. Were they um, like topless? Yeah. Yeah. I don't even remember if they went bottomless. Honestly, we just, <laughs> I think we just ended up hanging out with them sometimes. Like bought them some mashed potatoes and just hung out. So we tried to not be creepy. It's hard, you know, it's hard when you're like 22 and creepy. <laughs> you don't know any better to not be creepy. But yeah. you'd be like, hey, you want some drinks and some mashed potatoes? And we would just honestly, I think I remember just hanging out with some of the dancers, like with friends, and we would just chill. Like, um, I do remember a regrettable moment in my life. And the only time I've ever done it um, was asking out a stripper. It's like, okay. I don't know why. How'd it go? Like she really likes walk it. Me, it walk me through this. Yeah. Walk me through this. <laughs> yeah. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's yeah, it's like, dude, I can't him. believe she's like sitting here. I think she really likes me. <laughs> this is like, yeah, she's telling me. Oh, I don't even care that she has a kid <laughs> and currently pregnant. I think there's something going on here. Yeah. <laughs> hey. 
What are those marks on the inside of your arms? Eh, no yeah. worries. Tell me more. Hey, I see you're really digging those mashed potatoes. Would you like to get some some other time in my place? I don't know. I don't remember what I said. But she's like, no, nah, probably. I don't. Like, I just don't want to mix like work. And I was like, oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> it's like, yeah, me neither. I don't want to. I, yeah, I wouldn't want to ruin a good thing. <laughs> Archibald's basement. <laughs> right. Like, that's, the, that's a good yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the good thing. Um, uh, yeah, you don't know what, like, I'm trying to think. So in, I don't, no, I never went to any strip clubs in like North Carolina. Um, I mean, Syracuse certainly had your, your terrible ones. Um, oh yes. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a fact. Yeah. Um, so I mean, strip clubs never really were, I don't know whose thing I mean, it's, it's, I don't see anything wrong with strip clubs in any way, shape or form, but I just, I'm not sure I ever thought they were a good idea or if it was like a weird game of chicken where you're just like, yeah, we should definitely go to a strip club and everyone's too afraid to be like, no, I really don't want to because it's kind of an odd feel. But like I went to one, the last one I went to was in Atlantic city a few years ago for a buddy's bachelor party. Um, We were down there and we went into the strip club and within 15 minutes, I'm like, yeah, I don't want to be here in any, I'm like, this is, I'm like, this is terrible. I'm like, I just don't want to be in here. Like, I don't know that I was uncomfortable for any specific reason, but I'm like, yeah, this is, I'm like, and now in my late thirties, I am okay with saying, guys, I'm showing myself out and it's Atlantic <laughs> yeah. city. So you're like, boy, I hope I can find something. I mean, no, I'm, I'm a gambler. So I'll just go to the casino. But yeah, like me and like two of the other Guys, I was with. I'm like, I'm gonna leave. Do you want to leave? And they saw it as certainly the out there. Like, I do. Yes, I, yes, I want to go. So, yeah. I mean, it's it's an interesting world. There's nothing like a strip club. In general, in general, I've never felt like unsafe or anything like that in the ones that I've gone into. Um, but you will see all types of characters in the strip club. It is interesting. It's much like a casino. Where it's like you could have someone in a suit sitting next to someone who looks like they just got off work from the coal mine. Like both of those guys are sitting yeah. next to each other and it's they're the doing the same thing. Leveler. Yeah, it really is. Um, so from the mightiest pharaoh to the lowliest peasant, who doesn't enjoy yeah. a good strip? Um, well, now it's just like if you want strip clubs, they just have internet cam girls and stuff. So you don't even have to go anywhere. Now you right, can so now your, your introverts uh, can your yeah, introverts yeah. can enjoy this trip. Perverts home. stay home. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Finally a place to be comfortably perverted in, yeah. in your own home. <laughs> Speaking of which that's, that's RIP. That's a great that's the a great, great the, the great the great public pervert. Uh maligned. Oh much maligned, but too much so. Too much so, in my opinion. Just the uh the great masturbator. And yeah. humanitarian himself, Paul Rubens, Pee Wee Herman, R.I.P. We didn't <laughs> touch base on this yet. But how yeah, did you take um, it? Is <laughs> that one of your one of your Mount Rushmore movies tough. for it DVDs? Was, right? Yeah. It was it was tough. Um, I did exchange some clips with with like my brothers and some friends uh, through text, and it's um. It's pretty wild because you look back at it and as kids, it's it's chaos. And like the, the Pee Wee's Playhouse was very obscure, very weird, like wonky, like park claymation. Oh, yeah. um, I mean, but characters, but also like Muppet type things yeah. were like the couch yeah. talks. Yeah. Cherry the chair. The chair, um, yeah. Words of the Ma day. Yeah. So like uh, Lawrence Fishburne as Cowboy Curtis. Um <laughs> But like also like uh, with not big top Pee Wee, but Pee Wee's Big Adventure is that's also cast. But you watch that as an adult and it's actually better as an adult because it's really? so nonsensical. Hmm. Yeah, it's really a better watch as an adult, because as a kid, you're just like everything I'm seeing is funny because Pee because Pee Wee's zany. But as an adult, you realize that it still works because he's so creative. Like I think Paul Rubens actually was a pretty creative guy because the characters just, you can't replicate it. No, there's nothing like that. 
that came along or tried to do the same thing. I don't under even I don't even understand. And he he would he basically became that person. But then you'd still sp- sporadically see him in movies. I mean, we had him in Buffy the uh, Vampire Slayer. Um, we had him in a very small role in um, Thirty Hello? Rock. He was a he was in Thirty Rock. Yeah, played a funny character in that, like some kind of like king or prince or something with a uh, a little fake hand. <laughs> it was really funny, <laughs> and like really yes. short legs on a chair. It was, it was good. Real, real odd guy, but um, certainly not replicated. Like a very, very, very big pop culture piece of the 80s and 90s. He's one of those guys that also goes down. I mean, even though he's had these other roles, like he's Pee Wee Herman. He's like one of those guys that has another name forever. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah like, I, yeah, most people don't know. I would say a good amount of people, even after the fact, don't know if you say Paul Rubens, they're very, I would say majority of people aren't going to know who you mean. But if you say Pee Wee Herman, everyone under the sun knows who you mean. There's literally no one under the age of tw- like, or over the age of 20. Mm, that'd be a, that'd be an interesting point. Probably 30. Probably 30. We'll go 30 on the safe side. But no one under the or no one over the age of thirty that wouldn't know. Maybe thirty five. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, well, we might have uh, been on. How about that. you want to give us your best Pee Wee laugh as a <laughs> as a send off? That's good. That's good. Oh shit, that is good, dude. Very nice. <laughs> that was nice. <laughs> yeah. Yes, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I don't even know. Um. <laughs> It's like a crack. I was like, I was like fucking Patrick, Mah- Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Um, do you want to do words? Sure. I do want to pick up. So, um, I'm gonna do something we rarely do on these episodes, and I want to follow up with something we said we were gonna follow up with on the last episode, okay. which is my pinball arcade pitch. Um. So I'll just yes. do that. Why don't, let's just yep. roll right in. Why don't we do keep that? It, keep it hot. Um, yeah. So that's my my dream. Not a big deal. Is to own and operate a pinball arcade. I got really into it in Austin. Again, I think I mentioned it. Just the idea of each table being unique and trying to learn how to play it. Fundamentally, it's the same. Flippers. Keep the ball in. You get three balls. Blah, blah, blah. Everybody kind of knows it. A lot of lights and sounds. A lot of the new tables are pretty awesome. They have like um, a lot of like cool screens and full like soundtracks with like popular bands i love it it's a great game i love figuring them out um, i'm very average at it um, but i enjoyed learning about it as a bar called pinballs in austin and i've seen different iterations of this but I, the thing i like about them is that they have a lot of tables you can play them some of them have like just quarters or tokens but i think you can do better on it so my pitch is i think pinball is a game that there's a lot of nerdy people but a lot of people just jump on and play a few games and never really learn the game, you know, like they'll dump a couple quarters in and be like, ah, I don't get it. And they'll walk away at my uh, pinball arcade, which is going to be called grandma's house. Um, because when I was growing up, my grandma had a super Nintendo in her house and we would go there because grandma's house is everybody's like comfort house. In a way. it's like you go there, okay. you get like extra food, dessert. It's supposed to make you feel homey. So it's to have like whatever you can't get at home. Grandma will provide. Um, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you know what I mean. <laughs> That's um, fucking... and <laughs> <Ow>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, shit. I'm serious. Yep. Richard, oh, what the hell? All right. Um, but at grandma's house, I want people to walk customer service. We talk about all the time. Like if somebody's playing a pinball game and they lose their balls in like two minutes, I want somebody. <laughs> yeah, damn it. <laughs> That's what she said. Uh, I want somebody to go and be like, Hey, I saw you just like, Got out of this game real quick. Here, take a free game. Here, I'll show you. Like, I want people to show them out of the place so people get into it and get interested. Like, educate people about the game. Instead of, like, a free-for-all of, like, you're on your own, I want people to walk around and be like, hey, here you go. Um, Take some free games. Here, here's how you play this game. Let me show you. I want people to, like, generate interest in it and educate people about the great game that is pinball. Also, BYOB. What about, like, putting them on free play and charging admission 
another hour, model like, yeah, hourly like 20 bucks or, something or like whatever that. yeah yeah i'm down i like that um sure i mean there's something about the physicality of putting a quarter or a token in that Ooh, i really that's like true okay you also don't want people to hog i mean there's it, um, you don't want people to hog it per se, like a table, because it's free, and it's like, well, I've been here for thirty minutes. I mean, you you have some kind of etiquette, um, so I'm down for that. I mean, whatever the price equals X, I don't want people to get gouged or whatever. Um, but you know, maybe uh, one of the days we'll have like you know coupon day or something. You know, one of those um, Jurassic Park reference. Um, yeah, so maybe one couple of days are just free play, you know, kind of thing or whatever. But I don't know. I want to make it like very customer player friendly um but not just too nerd friendly uh, but yeah i don't know i mean uh so i'm looking for investors i guess is what i'm saying i'm mm-hmm. looking for i need uh seven hundred fifty thousand dollars for eight percent of my company oh oh yeah i Sharks. think shark tank wants to hear it <laughs> yeah. i think shark, shark i think mark cuban would be very interested in this endeavor I think you should absolutely uh, go for yeah. it. But where do you, where do you hold it? That's the problem. Is like True. now, are, does it, is it something that belongs in a big city for exposure? Um, and the amount of people would know about it, or is this more of like a, a hometown treat? Yeah, you can see it both ways because obviously, like well, in Austin at pinballs, they had a few locations, but a lot of it uh, since it was BYOB, a lot of it was almost like the culture of the parking lot. You go out to get another beer from your car and bring it in. You know, people would like be getting stoned in the parking lot, just hanging out, you know, especially on like on nights, like if they were open till I think like Friday, Saturday night, they were almost open till like midnight or two in the morning sometimes. Okay. So like after 10 p.m., it's only adults, you know, 18 and over. So it was kind of fun to just hang out with just adults, no kids running mm-hmm. around, just drinking some beers, hanging out. Okay. So I like that vibe of it. And a lot of people would show up. Well, the small town thing could be fun. Um, you know, I don't know if it's more or less riffraff. Depends on where it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I drive by this spot on Genesee Street every time in Auburn. It's an old, it was a family video. It's an old video rental spot that just sits oh, there yeah. unused. It's got a, it's got a regulation parking lot. You know, it's a big space. I'm like, you could really turn this into arcade. Of course, it's within walking distance of all the transients and, uh, you know, all the, the meth addicts in town. So you kind of have to deal with that. Uh, but I don't know. <laughs> so there is that crowd. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's that the churchgoers uh, and the VFW and packages yeah. unlimited across the street. <laughs> yeah, you're not spot on. You remember it. No, no. It doesn't change. Um, but yeah, I don't. You know, it could work anywhere. I mean, obviously, probably the, the the price of a small town to start it is cheaper. You know, you're really looking at. I mean, I look up games like pinball games. Pinball run games anywhere are not from cheap. like a few thousand. Like if you get some of those new ones, like the Foo Fighters game or something, those are probably running like ten, twelve thousand dollars for a new one. So, yeah. it's a high capital investment. But um, I'm looking, I'm looking for investments, investors. So, um, what's your what, what? What do you think? I know you're asking me some questions. What would you recommend for this establishment? So you're saying it'd be a BYOB location? Yeah, I thought about that. That's I mean, I don't tough. want to do like the liquor license stuff too, you know, in a way. Mm-hmm. I or don't do know. I? I don't know how do you want to get in the bar. I don't know business? how BYOB works. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what the rules are in New York. Now, what's nice anywhere. is that <laughs> what's nice is that you could theorize like. Two is you would never have to like maybe, you know, not do liquor and you just have beer or something like that. Mm-hmm. But a BYOB would be interesting. I don't. I just think there's like doing an activity itself and something like that we're right i understand you don't want to gouge the 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 consumer is i feel like i don't know like what's what's going to keep people there what would be a reasonable time for someone to spend at an arcade of strictly pinball um one to two hours is that is that what you think yeah realistically yeah because like Okay. Yeah, you could probably, you could, I mean, yeah, I think that would work. You could toss in the other, I mean, is the move, is the move to throw in some other, uh, it's some, not even necessarily video games, but no, but just, it's, I don't know. There's gotta be, you want people to have the option of staying a long time. You want, you don't want it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know if, if like that's 
right. Is that alcohol, but also like that you focus on having TVs that show sports. I think that's probably a given that you want to have some like sports maybe involved, or do you try to even go more rogue and have like movies or like classic TV shows? Like I've always loved um, bars that do that. Like you have literally like, you could have like X-Men playing like the cartoon Mm -hmm. playing because you'd know that people going for that would probably appreciate that nostalgia too. So do you do something like that? Um, You know, and if you're going for grandma's, if you're going to sell that, do you have some like furniture that literally you're getting outdated furniture because it's, I mean, it's cheap. It adds to like the grandma's house feel. So think of how easy it would be to furnish it with classic stuff like that. I mean, that would be something to consider and, or, you know, and you have like, you have a coffee table surrounded by a couple like, (laughs) like outdated couches. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah and like couches you call davenports and they're covered with plastic yeah yeah and like you have like baked goods because grandma's house has like cookies so you literally put out yep. cookies for people Ooh. like it yeah it'd be interesting to do stuff like that so you want mm-hmm. to you do want to have a i think you want to have a few items a few things that your place does so if people are like because that's what also is going to help you get larger groups hey do we want to go to grandma's house well, okay, yeah, because I'll play pinball or something. And some people are like, yeah, you know, I'll just hang out on the couches and have a drink or something like that. Like, you want to be able to appease multiple groups yeah. that where people don't necessarily have, like, want to do the same thing. games and all that. Yeah, some, to and some extent. Ball. But, yeah, there you go. Have, like, ski ball. So, or, so, like, you can still have classic aspects. But, yeah, I think you just want to expand a little and, and get creative with it. Um, but, like I said, that's a pretty niche thing that, you know, grandma's how what was it? Grandma's house or grandma's grandma's house. I like grandma's house. Okay. It's got a so, good cadence to me too, you know? And that's, and that's, that's got an interesting story behind it too, because you could say like, you know, it, I, I started with the idea of a pinball location, but then I just ran with the grandma's house thing and, you know, kind of went broad range nostalgia. So I think that would leave a lot of doors open for you and to rotate ideas without, you know, having pinball be the central thesis or like the, the focal point rather. And then you would be able to try other stuff based on the grandma's house concept. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yep. And, uh, yeah, I can just imagine Yeah, couches set up like little, or yeah, I could have like, what's the games you play all your old person card games. You could have tables of that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Cribbage. Have old board games, old board games for people to bust out and play. Yeah, dude. All right. First business meeting of Grandma's house adjourned. Awesome. We've done it. Hey, Perfect. You, all you listeners, strange fam, don't steal this from us. But Yeah. Uh, tell your investor, just, tell your horribly rich friends that are confused and <laughs> want to blow yeah. money. Yeah. Tell your reckless rich friends yep. how they can reach us. I right. got good credit, but I won't pay them back. But they will get 8%. <laughs> I'm going to waste all did, my good I credit we on did you. we did settle on 8%. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So All the right. words. Yeah. Words. These are for a suggested from uh, okay. Andy. Okay. Listener Andy. Jump, park, and murder. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Murder. I got to know how she came up with that one. Yeah. Well, you know, murder Might podcasts it. are very popular. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not huge on them. I don't. I, I don't know. But. I don't have anything for jump. Um, that being said, park. I have a story from, I want to say we were seniors in high school. And I don't know if you ever knew about this story, but I was riding in the Jeep with our friend, Jeff. Oh, wow. Yeah. And we were on the West side for some reason. So I feel like, Maybe going towards like the mall, towards your house or something. But (laughs) Jeff suddenly got the urge to just, I don't even know what the park's called. Like it's something behind like where like Gaetano's Pizzeria is. There's like a very small park between a handful of streets and Jeff Warner just, whoops. Um, Jeff, we'll bleep that out. Cut that, cut that, cut that. Um, 
just drove through the park, just drove through it. Really? Like it was a, <laughs> like it was a street and it scared the crap out of me. Cause I didn't know he was going to do it. And he never said anything. He just goes like, <laughs> and just kind of was going like 15 miles an hour, but went through the, all the grass, just through some trees and came out the other side and kept going. And I'm like, what just happened? It's folks. Wow. It's, this is about 200 feet of, of inner city park. And he just, Casually drove Please through you it. Believe he's done like that if you before. were a neighbor, <laughs> if you were a neighbor and came out of your house drinking like your coffee and you just watched that happen, there was no speeding or like no like getaway. It was just like it looked so matter of fact. Like you ever have someone tell you that if you want to get to like a section in a sports arena that you don't belong in, just look like you belong. Don't look yeah. Yeah, like yeah, you're yeah. looking try to get caught or something, just walk okay. as you would, as you belong and no one will yep. say anything. So I feel like someone could have saw that and been like, wait, what, wait, what just, what did I just see? So like, that's, that's what I a had good reason for it. For a <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like, huh. He couldn't have been breaking the law. He seems to have taken his time, was driving responsibly through the park and is, yeah. was in no rush. It just seems so fun, you know? Yeah. And he never, it never, never happened that. again. It's <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what happened, but he just felt compelled. He just went on that urge and we lived to see the another day. I kind of kept looked around. I'm like, did any police happen? To, no. I'm, all right. We're just going to keep going. Yeah. That's what I got for a park. I like a good, uh, I mean, park for me, I just got to have a good park in my town or wherever I live. Like it keeps me. It's important for my mental health, for sure. I mean, even in Austin, like, I think the reason I loved Austin so much and I stayed there for a long time because it had the best balance of, like, amenities that you would want from a city. So restaurants, concerts, all that cool shit. But then a huge park and series of parks. There was this park called Zilker Park, which was huge, green, open field. That's where the Austin City Limits Festival will be held. It was right next to, within that was, like, springs that would come up that you could go swimming in for, like, $3 if you live there all year round and then there'd be different trails that were off of it and you could like run around like they call it town lake but as part of, i mean part of the colorado river that went through town it's just huge man having that being able to kayak on that being able to meet up with people and just having that next to the city is huge obviously where i am now in the finger lakes it's real easy i don't think i could ever live somewhere that wasn't close to some body of water whether it's a river just some kind of water access and mm. greenery I think I would, that would like exacerbate my trapped feelings that I have. Like, dude, prison, not for me. I don't think I could do it. I'm going to tell you. Okay. Couldn't do okay. it. Wow. Hot <laughs> I think take. Gonna, I think, I, I think I'm going to not go to prison. You've decided um, after long, yeah. after, after mm-hmm. contemplating your options. Yeah. As I'm speaking okay. here now, that's what I'm thinking about. Um, but yeah, I'm a park lover. I love it. Um, okay. And I guess that's all I have to say about that. That's all I got to tell you about Laya. <laughs> oh god, right. nice. stupid is, um, stupid does, sir. Uh, yeah, I mean, I like a good park. Obviously, what's nice is nowadays that a lot of parks do build um, disc golf courses, and a lot of those are free. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of nice because in yeah. today's day and age, it's nice to have a free activity to just go. Like, you don't really need to equip a lot. You can play by yourself. You can play with other people. Um, there are a lot of options with disc golf. That's why it's a pretty, pretty solid hobby, hobby to pick up. Um, so that's, that's definitely a positive. Um, uh, you know, parks often house murder, but I wish they didn't. It's amazing that parks are such a pleasant pace, place, but are also often associated with murders. Every like, Netflix so, I mean, series has a park murder in it at some point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like SVU, I've got I, I, I 100, 100 park murders at least. I can't really get into the Netflix. I mean, I've gotten into a couple of them have been really good, but now like just making them like seven or eight episodes is way too much. Because like in the first episode of most of these d- crime docs, I'm like, oh, I mean, based on what we know right now, it's probably the neighbor who was upset about like x and y about this relationship going and then it's like no let's do five more episodes of web sleuths coming up with theories and new information and thinking of other ideas of what could have happened and then the last episode it's like turns out it was the neighbor because of x and y (laughs) we just like it's it's like yeah yeah 
it's like, almost like that's 90 percent correct but yeah, let's explore the 10 percent this things is that... <laughs> yeah this is more this is more simple but yeah. what's nice is that we're also going to shove conspiracy theories so like we want your mind to drift even though you probably yeah. on the basis of general information probably rightfully so made a good prediction but we're going to throw in some other like curveballs to make you second guess yeah. yourself but yeah no no you yeah. were right oh it was the husband <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> it's like Scooby Doo stuff. The first guy, right? Yeah. Isn't it always like the first right. person they run into is like the yep. uh, the old man from the amusement criminal. park. Yeah, Murder kids. does make Actually, me think you know of one of the craziest. What? Yeah. No, no. Go ahead. What? One of the craziest. What? I can't catch you then. Um, so something really crazy happened. Not murder, but just as bad, almost. Uh, so. In a friend group, so with the band, the Fair City Fire band, there was a guy who was like in the friend group. One it was a roommate of one of the band members. His name was Blaine. I'm going to say his name because you can look it up in the newspapers if you want to. Um, he's always too nice, you know, too nice. He had his his girlfriend who I think he got married. They were like good Christian folk, like really like almost too, too nice. And uh, he had a goatee, which always, you know, I I. I got this theory that I say never trust a man in a goatee. I don't know why. Um, unless he's a professional wrestler or a porn star. There's something about a goatee. I don't know. Just like there's something behind that that I just I just can't trust. And Blaine, sure enough, a man of a goatee. Um, <laughs> but you know, just clean white and red. Just a, a good old boy. Just a nice guy. Um, until the day we learned that he was talking to like on the dark web, a guy in Canada who he was trying to hire to come down to Texas to help him assault his wife's sister. And then why? Wait, and then kill her? Yes. So, uh, so wait, wh- why did he, why? He was going to, I, I don't know why. He wanted to have sex with his wife's sister forcibly. Right. And then kill her. And this he wanted this guy to help him do it. And the guy on the dark web from Canada turned him in. Yeah. And we found everybody found he got arrested. I, mean, I don't even know where he is now. Were He's you guys actively kind of friends with him? Like how oh, active? Yeah. yeah. Oh, he would go to like every show. I mean, we talked to him oh, okay. all the time. I mean, there was no. And then like, and then it was like, like oh, I guess he won't. Yeah. I guess he won't be at this like weekend show. Like, like, yeah, he wasn't like a just, serial rapist that we knew. No, but, of, but but all just like. It just suddenly happened yeah. one day. Yeah, 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 yep, yeah, out of nowhere. And then, sure enough, I saw his photo. It's all his headshot in the paper, and I was like, "It's the goatee." <laughs> there it is. I knew it. I knew there was something wrong. <laughs> but yeah, no, it was fucked up, dude. Obviously. So like, and then of course, his wife's sister's like fucked up from it, and then like the sister, like this is what really sh- sucks too. Like, so after this is going on, like weeks into it, like his wife goes to like their church and it's like trying to look for like support and they like kicked her out of the church <laughs> like it was Gee, her fault well something. there you go she had no idea there's I your know. organized religion i know it's like we can't have that here it's bailing like, when times get tough people. huh i know um but dude i could Clown. not believe it it's like one of the crazy things that like this dude totally unassuming um yeah, we were like, holy shit, Blaine, look him up. Blaine Mallon. I'm going to give his full name because he's a criminal. <laughs> I don't think I was besmirching anything because he, I think, he, I don't know if he went to trial. He was in, who knows where he is. He's going to be in pound my ass prison, though, that's for sure. <laughs> that's going to be in one of those. Are you looking at it up? Blaine Mallon? BL- I think so. Maybe I got the name wrong. I don't know. Did they use his name in the article? Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't be saying man. Um, I I don't got nothing. Uh, man allegedly conf- Yeah, here it is. All right, Blaine A. Mallon, <laughs> KV Austin. Yeah, uh, yeah. Man allegedly confesses to planning a rape through online chats. Twenty seventeen. Yeah, through an anonymous chat I, service. I must I must be spelling his name incorrectly or something. Very M M A L O N. Yeah, look at it. we're done. This is pretty dark. Um, but it just maybe hey, this is what happens when you throw murder into the word bank. <laughs> it makes you think of dark things. 
that happened. But dude, just the idea that it could have been somebody. I mean, it was it it was somebody we knew and like it was really friendly, like never honestly, like I don't think he really drank too much, like just every they seem so square, like in, about their life. And uh, that's 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 pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, <laughs> so I, I I going to I'm going to give you one back. What? So, what? so my um, I am friends with um my buddy's brother was set to stand trial for murder. And he, um, well, presumably committed it um, b- because he killed himself in, in jail. Oh, my um, God. You, it, was, it was 2010. He was a BU student in med school. And he found, like, a massage therapist on Craigslist and was ha- getting victims by meeting them at a hotels and such like that. It was known as the Craigslist killer. And his brother, that's a great is my, name. Is my is my friend from college, so like I literally, I mean it's it's terrible. Like that's when I was living in North Carolina in 2010, and I'm <clears throat> somehow it came up news or something like that, and they said the name, and it was Philip Markov, and I'm like, I'm like John had a brother named Phil. I'm like, and Markov is a pretty specific name, and it's like from Central New York. I'm like, no fucking way and like found out and so like you know it's it's awful i mean i i reached out to my friend and i'm like okay i gotta say something because he's probably in a horrible spot right now so like you know i kind of sent him uh just some well wishes for for him because you know it's tough for him to deal with that in his personal life but yeah dude i mean it's it's pretty pretty wild. Cause I had met the kid when we were freshmen, he was like a junior or senior in high school. So he actually came up and hung out with us, uh, at Oswego one night, like, and drank with us and stuff in the dorms. And so I, I had met him before, but then like things just spiraled out of control. He had like a fiance and stuff that they made like a, uh, like a, a doc, docu movie on him. There is. Yeah. He's like, got one. Yeah. Oh Yeah. That's too alliterative to not have a, a documentary. Right. <laughs> Craigslist right, killer. Right. But um, yeah, dude. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty wild. I kind of even forget that it, that it took place. Cause I'm not really something you normally talk about. Yeah. But with this, the whole like murder thing, it's just like, wow, it is nuts when it hits, when you can like direct link it. Um, you had more interaction, but the, the one, the, but in my defense, the guy I knew actually pulled it off. So, <laughs> and didn't need yeah. help from dark web Canada. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's wild, man. I mean, some of those, uh, you know, murder podcasts and stuff, it, it is, it is insane. And what it's doing is it, it does make everyone just assume that it's like, no one can be trusted. Everyone is possibly a murderer. I can't trust anything. So I don't know. It's um, it's a very yeah, weird kind of glad niche I, yeah. that to be. Uh, I mean, it is popular. It's really popular. Like mm-hmm. it is a pop culture thing to be into like uh, murder podcasts and stuff. Now I, I get that there's a mystery element, and mysteries are are mysteries, and and it's interesting to collect data and stuff, but. I don't know. For for me, I'm just like mm, I'm gonna take a step back. I'm like I, I'll I'll watch movies because movies I I can be like well at least this isn't real. Whereas like all these murder podcasts, it's like ah all of this actually happened, and you just hear yeah, about messed up heinous. stuff, and you're like this is <laughs> yeah. all this all happens whether they achieve it or they don't and stuff like that. It's not even just missing persons or anything like that. These are, it's like no 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 these are murder podcasts. So I mean a lot of people like them, and and like I said, it's like. Listen, I don't think that makes you crazy or anything like that. If you, if, I mean, if it's intriguing, it's intriguing, but it's, it, it does, it, it rubs me a little wrong way, but teach their own. Yeah. It's so, um, like I've watched them and then I like, I remember the one, the night stalker, the Richard Ramirez, Yeah, yeah. Like, it's the craziest fucking story. That was a good one, but that it was one terrifying because really he had no set demographic for his victims, mm-hmm. old, young, male, Wild female. Cards. 
all you know it's like that's fucking scary and then uh you know but then I'm, i feel <laughs> feel real shitty <laughs> afterwards like i don't know how you could watch this all the time so and i know like a lot of people that watch the murder stuff is like seems to be like very vulnerable young women <laughs> are really into it and i don't know why is it to like mentally train and prepare for what could be that's what so I've got to feel what, like it doesn't help your mental state to just know every single thing that could happen and go wrong. Yeah. If you're listening, let me know, put it in the comments and stuff, you know, smash that comment button and let us know why you like listening to murder podcasts, even if you're terrified of it. <laughs> like, I don't know. I mean, they are, they are riveting, but it's like, I feel they gross. are like, I, I yeah. get it. Like they, they are, it is really interesting. So like, I can't deny that, but like you said, it's just like, yeah, if I listen to one, I'm like, well, now I feel kind of icky. Like, I don't want to feel this way. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. I mean, we like war, yeah. war, like war. You could say the same thing. You could literally say the same thing for like war documentaries. People could be like, well, why are you thinking about people killing each other on massive mm-hmm. scales for literally no logical reason other than you know, trying to establish some sort of dominance. So yeah, maybe people get rubbed the wrong way by, by war movies. Um, but I mean, you tell me a new world war two movies coming out. I'm like, I'm in sure. Let's yeah. go. Like I love world war two movies. Love them. Yeah. So hey, why do you like two big sweaty men hulking slapping meat, you know, yeah, big meaty men well, slapping meats. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, what's up with that? And like, yeah, yeah I can't tell you. Yeah, um, you watch I feel murder pretty podcast. positive after it. That's for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you <laughs> negative about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll tell you what. Nothing bad about that. At there, Logan Paul. He's pretty good yeah. at it. Yeah, the Hogan Paul. Hogan Paul. Um, <laughs> here, we'll wrap up murder with this. Could you kill somebody? <laughs> Asking for a friend. <laughs> It's just being recorded by the government. I just don't, I don't know everything about you, man. I just got to know. Is murder in you? <laughs> no. Yeah. Not even, not even close. I know. Um, it's so gross. <laughs> I feel like so bad. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, that's what's crazy too about, you know, um, even killing someone in self-defense. I, I get why that messes people up. Like mm-hmm. you did, you literally did nothing wrong and you often are put in situations of like, well, I thought this person or this person was in fact going to kill me. So I acted in self-defense that happened to kill them. And you're like, I'm sure that could mess you up. Even though you're like, I shouldn't be bought like, well, right. Is it, I shouldn't be bothered this because I literally, did what I had to do to not die by their hands. So like, shouldn't I not be bothered? But also it's like, I did something that resulted in someone losing their life. So I don't know. I, I just, yeah, I know, I, I know I wouldn't handle it. Well, I am, I do not have a phenomenal track record with mental health as it is with not yeah. killing people. So I'm guessing I wouldn't handle murder or even killing someone in self-defense. I would not handle that. Well, probably. Yeah. So I'll stay away from just learn. I'm going to, that's what a murderer would say. I'm going to opt out. So I will say the opposite that I would murder somebody that you do want to kill people. Or yeah. Hot off the trail. Right. I don't know. It's never the guy you most suspect. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Just think about all the work involved. (laughs) There it is. It's me. Yeah. It's like, uh, it takes a long time to Here, Well, this reminds me. Well, I saw this. Would you rather that made me think about this? Sure. Would you rather get away? Would you rather get away with a terrible crime, but live in fear of someone discovering it or go to prison for three years for a crime you didn't commit? Sorry. What was the first one again? So would you rather get away with a terrible crime? Okay. But you live in fear of someone discovering it or go to prison for three years for a crime you didn't commit. So do you live the telltale heart, the fear, for the rest of your life? Or do you just you, bite you know, the bullet you know, in three you know years? What? Here's the problem. You know I can't go to jail. Matt, here's the problem. 
is I don't understand because you're guaranteeing me that I'm going to live in fear that someone's going to find out. So do they find out or not? If they don't, then why would I be living in fear? Because the contingency is they don't find out. It's the fear. So no, you do. No, I mean, <laughs> dude, get away with it, man. You can say it. Get away no. with it. <laughs> you no. want to know what? No, because like, I don't know. I, I think I could do well. I could do okay in prison <laughs> for three years. Yeah. It's yeah. just like studying abroad. Yeah, I think I could figure yeah. it out. I'm a, I'm a, yeah, I'm not attractive. Um, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm not, I'm not a, a small, uh, effeminate person. So like, I don't think I'd be primo for the, for the negative to turn into the lady of the night, um, mm-hmm. in prison. Um, I'm pretty likable. I can make people laugh. Too. Making people laugh goes a long way. Yeah. No one wants to kill yeah, the guy yeah. that makes you laugh. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to use that as yeah. my defense. I could handle prison better than I could handle the anxiety. Yeah. Hey, is that a, a carrot in my butt or are you just happy to see me? Oh, see, that's that's a little late. The humor is supposed to prevent that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, Matt's Still like, hilarious. right. Yeah. Matt's like, so, no. you know. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really give him a good time? No, no, Matt. That No, yeah. you're supposed to do this first. Huh. Oh, boy. Hey, a couple 20-pound dumbbells and five gallons of petroleum jelly. I could survive in prison for wow. sure. Wow. Wow. Uh, yeah, I could. I mean, just the mental toll of getting away with a terrible crime. I mean, I guess, again, it depends what's the terrible crime. Is it some kind of white collar embezzlement thing that just right. costs people homelessness? I mean, who cares, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Doing uh, killing John Wick's dog. That's basically it. Would you live in that fear? Probably not. That'd be terrible. Mm mm. No. I had someone at work. I had someone at work tell me that she, if if something ever, if something like movie based apocalyptic ever happened, she's like, I would just. She she said she goes, she goes, I would just submit. She goes, I would, I would, wouldn't even deal in like the post apocalyptic world. I'm like, you're not even gonna give it a try. She goes, no, alien invasion, zombies. She's like, I would off myself. I'm like. Wow, I'm like really don't even want to try. I'm like I I I I'm not gonna lie, I, I kind of be pumped because like society yeah. collapsed. So you're like all real responsibility in life is gone. That'd probably be the cure of my anxiety. Be like okay, so now we're all in agreement that zombies yeah. are what we have to fear. So like I can do that because that's just right in front of me. You're kind of going more primal, and you're like, listen, I kind of all of my fears and anxieties are kind of wiped away because like, I don't have to worry about, you know, well, it's money like getting comfortable work yeah, with and, death too. Yeah. It's so like, I, I'm dead already. It's just, I don't know what day it is. What's when it's going to uh-huh. happen. It's just like, yeah. What's there to be scared. You know? Right. Um, so I, um, oh, I, I think I thrive. Other people, I guess. I think as I the thrive. walking dead has taught us, is yeah. there a reason to go on? Yeah. Um, resources, all that. I mean, I could, I mean, there's an argument to be made to just be like, I'm out of here and be like, I mean, that makes sense. <laughs> I get why you no. don't want to be a part of this. <laughs> no, because I feel better like, you know, you're kind of keeping tabs on people. So like, you know, you see, you see who you outlast. So, you know, you're just kind of like, oh yeah, that person was like a, you know, they were a pretty prominent what if you person. Could I outlasted yeah. them. Mm-mm. You just booze and pills, do one of those nights and just be like, mm-hmm. hey. I don't want to have my throat eaten by um, a zombie. No, that's just Take not how chances. I want to go. Nope, taking my chances. Right. Yeah, that's fair. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm palming through, I like man. It. I probably would too. I mean, I would too. I think. Um, again, nothing. Five pounds of Vaseline won't solve. See, you gotta stop going back to that. You gotta, you gotta. There's other. I'm not ways. going dry, dude. Know. I'm not going dry. The zombies <laughs> don't want to even have sex. Why are you doing this? This isn't even a solution. No. Is that this an is offense? for me? <laughs> this is for me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're zombies. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, they can borrow some or whatever, but this is more of a mm-hmm. me thing. It's good. Very good. It's We've good. solved zombie sex. I guess. Words for next week. Yeah. These were submitted by Bale. 
Okay. Bailey S. Cap. Sofa. Quest. Are these loaded? Is this something specific that you would know? See, I feel like if it's like one of your friends, I don't know if they're trying to like bring out a story from you. Or no, not. none of none of them are. Cap. Okay. See, a truly random cap. As in like ball cap, not as in like no cap, as the Gen Z says. Mm. Sofa and quest. Sofa and request. Request or quest? Quest. Okay. Like, like a journey. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Nice. Nice. I mean, all of us have had a quest for a sofa at some point, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I always... Yeah. It's kind of it's kind of interesting to look at pieces of furniture and know where they came from and stuff. But uh, that's college houses and college like rooms and stuff. Any furniture was always always had a great story behind it. It's just like, oh, did your parents get rid of it? Did like an aunt or uncle was going to throw it away? Did you find it on the side yeah. of the road? Like yeah. every every piece of furniture in a college town has has a story to tell. I, uh, well, yeah, here's the teaser. I had a piece of furniture that I found in DC that I had with me for like 10 years in Austin and it was nicknamed the flip and fuck. So I'll just, I'll just leave wow. it at that. Boy. So, yeah. Another teaser, another hot teaser. Really excited to hear about it. All right. Friends, Romans, country fam, be well. Thanks for checking us out. Next episode, number 30. Smash it. Smash that subscribe button. Smash. Smash it. Smash, Smash it. it. Smash it.